graduation ceremony for the Faculty of Engineering and the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. The official proceedings will be begin shortly and in a moment the graduands will enter the auditorium and I shall invite you to stand. They will be followed by the academic procession and then by the official party. As the official party enters, we invite you to join the singing of the traditional graduation song, Gare Amos. Please then take your seats as the Chancellor takes his seat. If you're carrying a cell phone, please ensure it's now either turned off or made silent. And whilst you're welcome to take photos, please move back to your seat immediately after having taken them and please do not stand in the aisles. At the end of the ceremony, the Chancellor will invite the gathering to sing God New Defend New Zealand. Please remain standing following the end of the anthem as the processions leave the auditorium. And once the last graduates have left, you will also be invited to leave. Would you now please all stand?
Please be seated. In a mana, in a real, in a hurry far, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto kato. Vice Chancellor, Pro Chancellor, Council members, members of the university, special guests, the graduands, families and friends. I extend a warm welcome to this, the sixth spring graduation ceremony for 2011 of the University of Auckland. This week the University is bestowing a total of 2,708 qualifications on some 2,450 students. At this ceremony degrees will be conferred and diplomas awarded in the faculties of engineering and medical and health sciences. A total of 292 in person, plus a further 104 in absentia. I am privileged as Chancellor to preside at spring graduation for a third year. The regularity of graduation ceremonies makes them no less special for the University and me personally than for those of you being capped here today, many for the first time. It is also a pleasure to return to the Auckland Town Hall long our traditional graduation venue for the first time since 2009. The Aotea Centre, which we now use, has been temporarily captured for Rugby World Cup purposes. Graduation is a festive event rich in history, pomp and colour with a lively array of contemporary touches. Here in Auckland, our rich mix of cultures and ethnicities can be seen in the striking variety of dress and adornments worn by graduands. Today is one of hard-earned celebration by you, the graduands and diplomates on your academic accomplishments, and by your family and friends who have encouraged and supported you and are here to share in your success. The University, represented by the Council and academic staff members seated behind me, and those many staff who control proceedings with remarkable precision, takes equal pleasure at this hugely significant day for each and every one of you. The University of Auckland is deservedly ranked as one of the best universities in the world. Your qualifications will always serve you well in this country and abroad, whether in qualifying you for a satisfying career or in leading to more advanced study, or simply as a route to personal and intellectual enrichment. In today's ever-changing workforce, you cannot afford to stop learning. So please keep in mind our enormous range of postgraduate opportunities. I urge you as alumni of New Zealand's leading university always to remember your alma mater we depend increasingly on our graduates for support, moral and political, as well as financial. Your advocacy and influence are vital in encouraging government and the community at large to fund universities so they can generate the knowledge needed to drive a productive and competitive economy 
and to create full and satisfying lives for all New Zealanders. At the same time, philanthropy has become critically important to our university, funding major capital projects, scholarships and professorial chairs. The crucial contribution of major research universities is not well understood and therefore insufficiently acknowledged. It is inconceivable that a developed, progressive 21st century nation can maintain that status without strong, internationally recognised research-based universities such as the University of Auckland. Our innovative research is vital for long-term sustainable economic growth and social cohesion, never more so than in the testing times we face in the wake of the global recession and now the devastating Christchurch earthquakes. Universities equip graduates like you not simply for the jobs of today, but for future careers not yet imagined. Universities need greater investment by government, the commercial sector, and private philanthropy, not less. But that's sufficient for me on the challenges facing this institution. For today is unquestionably your day. I congratulate you and trust that you will long cherish memories of your graduation in September 2011. Our speaker at this final ceremony is Garant Martin, the Chief Executive Officer of County's Monaco District Health Board since December 2006. The DHB services a population of over 450,000 with many socio-economic challenges, a diverse ethnic mix and a young population. Mr Martin came to this role from the Welsh Assembly Government where he was Director of Health and Social Care Strategy. He has managed many levels of service provision in both primary and secondary care, including more than 20 years experience in health management. He held the Chief Executive role at Kettering General Hospital in Northamptonshire and senior executive positions in London and Birmingham hospitals. Mr Martin studied modern history at the University of Wales and also has a master's degree in management and health policy from the University of Birmingham. He is a member of the Institute of Directors on the advisory board of the New Zealand Centre for Social Innovation and on the board of trustees of the Auckland Philharmonia Orchestra. Mr Martin. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, uh, members of the Council, members of the University, graduates, friends and family. Um, kia ora, tolo falafa, ni hao. And for where I'm from, Pinanda a Kroiso, which is Welsh. And you know how satisfying it's for me to be able to put Samoan and Welsh in the same sentence after last Sunday. <laughs> and not having a collective nervous breakdown as a result. I know how bad people feel in New Zealand when the All Blacks go out of the World Cup. And I, I remember what happened in 2007. That's what you feel like. I feel like that all of the time, being Welsh. <laughs> it's a huge pleasure today to be asked to join what's a huge and fantastic achievement by, by the graduates in this room. And also for the families, because on that time, it actually represents a crescendo, a completion of a huge amount of uh, help, support that family and Fano have put into making sure that today actually happens. And I remember from my own graduation what an incredibly proud moment it was for myself and my family uh, when I did graduate. So thank you for asking me to come and speak today. And, and what I want to talk about is something that will affect all of us, whether or not you work in health or whether or not you, you, you are receiving uh, health care. Because actually what we're facing at the moment in healthcare is a challenge of a generation. And what I mean by that is that we're facing huge demographic changes um, in, in, in our population. Uh, we're seeing the baby boomers come finally of age or come finally into old age as we begin to retire. In fact, all the people on the stage are baby boomers. So as they're moving through... <laughs> well, some of them. As they, and as they're moving through, now actually they're beginning to retire. And actually what's happening, that's leading to a significant increase in demand, because we all know they're very demanding people. 
But also what we're seeing actually is a significant aging of our population, which means to say that people are living with disease for a lot longer. We can do more. We can treat more, we can keep people healthy for a lot longer. In the start of the 20th century, the average life expectancy was around about 47 if you came from the UK. And, and actually now, in most developed countries, indeed in many countries, it's up into the 80s of a child being born today. In fact, that story of the, the child, a child is being born today who will live to be 120, 130. We're seeing people living longer. The problem is you don't live longer at 25. You live another 50 years at 75 with all the attendant problems that that brings. And what it also means with more and more people retiring is it means the burden on you guys in terms of earning the money and paying the tax to keep us well in our retirement is actually going up. So can I actually thank you in advance for working so hard to get qualifications in order that we can continue to live the life that we would like to have. The challenge really, however, it's is not really technical. Uh, it's actually much of it is behavioural in how we actually interact with our healthcare systems because increasingly what we're worried about is our ability to maintain universal healthcare for everybody as that burden comes on. So actually what I want to talk about for a moment is that we are on the edge of a revolution. The first revolution we went through in healthcare was things like public health. When we learned that good sewers, um, proper water supply, and good public health actually eradicated diseases like cholera. Sadly, in, in lots of places, we still haven't finished that revolution yet. But actually, in countries like New Zealand, we have. And the last century was all about a second revolution in healthcare. Being able to have operations and, 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 and drug developments were able to keep you well and healthy for a lot longer, hence the improvement in life expectancy. But now we're in the midst of a third revolution in healthcare as actually what happens is the pattern of demand upon us changes. As we live longer and live longer with disease, that means how people access and use health services is beginning to change. And actually, part of that is all going to be defined by how we're going to improve quality, how we're going to deal with inequalities, and how importantly we're going to deal with something called knowledge management. Because the amount of knowledge that we now have about medicine is growing exponentially. If you trained in the 1980s, Actually, what you learned in the 1980s is a very small proportion now of what you need to learn to be a competent clinician. And I blame a lot of that on the internet in terms of the exchange of information. And to show the impact something that the internet has had, first of all, can I say it was only 12 years ago that I actually sent my first email, and I seem to spend most of my time doing that. And then also talking to my son the other day when I explained where I was from the UK, there were only three TV channels. And he said, what, only three children's TV channels? And I said, no, just three TV channels, and they were just in black and white. And he looked at me really sadly and said, well, never mind, Dad, at least you had the internet. <laughs> there are people, and he's 14 now, there's people now thinking about going to university who don't, cannot imagine a world without the internet. And some of the, the challenges that we're facing are in many ways simple but hugely profound. In my job, I think there's only three problems that we need to solve in healthcare to actually resolve the problems that we're facing. Three very simple problems, but they've all got incredibly complex answers. The first one is, given what we know about the impact on health of diabetes, why is it that overweight people don't lose weight? I'd probably include myself in that, and I'm ahead of the... the The second one is, and this is a worry for, in particular for, for Ian Martin on the stage here, why is it that 40% of doctors don't wash their hands between patients? Remember that next time you're in hospital. <laughs> and also, an airline crashes every day in Auckland, but we do nothing about it. Because when I say that, actually, are the people coming in contact with the health system today? and mistakes being made and their health status being affected as a result adds up every day to the passenger load of a 747 jumbo jet. But because it's lost in the system, we don't seem to do something about it, yet it adds up to a huge amount of expenditure, a huge amount of pain, and actually have to, somebody would have to go through repairing operations as a result. What happened is we have divorced risk and from consequences. And we see it all around us, actually, uh, in, in those of us who smoke. Um, because the reason why people don't wash their hands between patients and why 
overweight people like me don't lose weight, is not because I don't recognize the risk, is that I just don't think it's going to happen to me today. And it's the same with smoking. People who smoke know it's bad for them, but don't give up because they don't think the cancer is going to happen to them today. But the problem is the accretion of all of those non-change of behavior leads people to be at risk. And then when you have cancer, when you have diabetes, it's too late, mate. The problem is, again, behavioral. So in the future, we'll be working very, very differently to begin to address those issues. First of all, those working in healthcare with a combination of very, very high-tech working, but some of it will be low-tech. And for those smokers, by the way, saying it's okay, I can continue smoking, because they'll eventually, they'll eventually find a cure for cancer. Well, there was a report out today by the, the World Cancer Association which said that only 5% of cancers are actually genetic, 95% of them are caused by behaviours. So unfortunately, you don't actually have that get-out clause. We're also, also talking about working with patients in a different way. They're almost going to be the co-creators of healthcare. You will be the co-creators of your healthcare in the future. Because if you're diagnosed with a chronic illness in your 30s, you'll probably live with that for 50 years. You will become an expert in your own right. So actually, how we train patients is going to be incredibly important. Because the last thing you want to have is patients coming in, having diagnosed themselves on Wikipedia, which happens a great deal. You know, the number of times I've been talking to doctors and they had the complaining of patients coming in saying, doctor, I've got anthrax. Look, I've got a printout for the internet. No, you've got a chest infection. No, it's anthrax, look. Actually, you know, actually how we train patients in the future is going to be very important. I think there are roles for institutions like the University of Auckland in terms of how we do that. The other thing is there won't be enough of you. There certainly won't be enough of you to keep us going. And I think that will mean new opportunities and new disciplines will develop. But also I think the real impact is going to be around knowledge management. How do we make sure with a massive expansion of what we do know and what we do know works and what we can know, how do we make sure that we keep people up to date? We simply can't expect people to do it on their own. We have to begin to knowledge, uh, manage our knowledge and manage and strategize how we actually train people. And so a critical component, I think, of raising to the challenges of tomorrow in, that are here today in healthcare is making sure that we manage the knowledge and continue to train people in the health system actually on an ongoing career, uh, on a career basis. So really, today, I'm afraid, I have to say, today is not the end of your education. It's merely the start. This is the first date that you're on. Because many of you will continue through for the rest of your lives of continuing tertiary education as you update and, and as you expand and develop into different careers. So I think it's important, however, just to take a moment to celebrate your first steps that you've taken. And also to take a moment to thank those who have supported you, including the bank, and also uh, those who have taught you, even though that may be a very, very painful thing to have to admit. I'd just like to say the future is here. You are the future. It's probably just not evenly distributed yet. But I really do envy you, because you're at the start, and I'm sort of just about over halfway. Because I can see the opportunities in front of you. And I wish you well and all the luck uh, in the future. And can I just thank you now for working so hard to pay your taxes to keep me in my dotage. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, Chancellor. By the authority vested in me by resolution of the University of Auckland Council, I, Ian Parton, Pro Chancellor, confer the degrees and award the diplomas stated upon those who, within their faculties, have satisfied the requirements of this university. I now call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, Professor Davies, to present graduands in that faculty. Pro Chancellor, as Dean, I have the honor of presenting to you the graduands in the Faculty of Engineering. Graduate Diploma in Engineering, Nisha Angra. <clears throat> Graduate Diploma in Engineering Transportation, Ashish Kumar. The degree of Bachelor of Engineering with Second Class Honours First Division, Chenny He. San Duke Lee. The degree of Bachelor of Engineering with Second Class Honours Second Division, Wing Fung Leong Cho. <laughs> Jason David Horrocks. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering, Karen Marie Brockbank. Fatia Nur Saswani Che Yaya. Chao Chen. Toby Hung Yu Chen. Young Zhuang Chen. Siu Kwan Chung. Hyun Chan Choi. Anthony James Dawson. Yuan Fu. Christopher Nigel Hayden. Timothy William Harton. Yu Chung Huang. <laughs> Lei Huang. <laughs> Pak Ying Hui. <laughs> Spandana Mohan Kacheri. <laughs> Gemma Rene Matheson. Sherry May. <laughs> Gerard Alex McHardy. <laughs> Ibrahim Wagdi Rateb Moram. <laughs> Yung Kyu Nguyen. <laughs> Scott William Osman. Andre Purmadi. <laughs> Rahul Ramnath. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Engineering, Stuart Charles Randall. <laughs> Ashdeep Singh. <laughs> Yong Kyo Kyu Song. Zerzia Yang. <laughs> Yi 
Yang Sung. The degree of Bachelor of Engineering conjoint with first class honours, Adelia Dramada Nata Atamaja, and a Bachelor of Commerce. The degree of Bachelor of Engineering conjoint with second class honours, first division, Derek Ryan Sam, and a Bachelor of Commerce. Postgraduate Diploma in Operations Research with Distinction. Liu. <laughs> Liu Zhong Liang. <laughs> Degree of Bachelor of Engineering Honours with First Class Honours. Bu Chung Jin, Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Chul Jiong in Computer Systems Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> William Yang Lai Li in Electro Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> Gabrielle Wei Chung Lo in Biomedical Engineering. James Kieran Miller in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Nilroy Nilsan Pakiyaraja in Computer Systems Engineering. <laughs> Sugam Panith P Peter Kala in Civil Engineering. <laughs> Joseph Lionel Schneider in Computer Systems Engineering. Rees Sina in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Joshua Daniel Strubant in Mechatronics Engineering. <laughs> Rees Matthew James Williams in Biomedical Engineering. <laughs> Julie Minzo in Civil Engineering. To the degree of Bachelor of Engineering Honours with Second Class Honours, First Division, Glenn Daniel Christensen in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Bakit Dahoud in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Paul Andrew Jarvi in Civil Engineering. <laughs> Yu Wei Li in Computer Systems Engineering. Yi Lu in Civil Engineering. Andrew Robert Patterson in Mechatronics Engineering. Janish Deepak Prasad in Civil Engineering. Samuel Schlatter in Mechatronics Engineering. Wasim Ayub Sidot in Civil Engineering. Christopher Gareth Sims in Mechatronics Engineering. Somya Sri Sitara in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. David Leslie Ching Tung in Civil Engineering. To the degree of Bachelor of Engineering Honours with Second Class Honours Second Division, Ali Al Jawad in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Rashini Sonali Atapatu in Computer Systems Engineering. <laughs> Lukman Ramadana Bukhtia in Biomedical Engineering. Sisa Bashra de Alwis in Computer Systems Engineering. <laughs> Rowan Lee Fletcher in Computer Systems Engineering. <laughs> Sa
Sakti Gounder in civil engineering. <laughs> Afik Sahanipa in mechatronics engineering. <laughs> Adrian Robert Jamison in software engineering. <laughs> Wei Wei Kong in civil engineering. To Chung Liu in Mechatronics Engineering. <laughs> Kartik Madhavan Ekalava in Civil Engineering. <laughs> Nadine Lanola Papalini Plapali in Chemical and Materials Engineering. <laughs> Vaselina Boris Lavova Pencheva in Engineering Science. <laughs> Chi Xu Fang in Mechatronics Engineering. <laughs> Vivek Mani Rajakal in Electrical and Elect Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Prachi Rahul Reddy in Biomedical Engineering. <laughs> Alexander Anthony Santos in Mechatronics Engineering. Rohit Ramesh Sawant in Chemical and Materials Engineering. <laughs> Hamish Michael Shaw in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> James Tizard in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Wang Myung in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Jonathan David Wheeland in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> so Won Yang in Chemical and Materials Engineering. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Engineering Honours conjoint with First Class Honours, Kin Pyung Chang in Civil Engineering and a Bachelor of Commerce. Josephine Stephanie Matianto in Chemical and Materials Engineering and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Edward Dane Renner in Chemical and Materials Engineering and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Glenn Stewart Robertson in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Commerce. To the degree of Bachelor of Engineering Honours conjoined with Second Class Honours First Division, James Victor Beckett in Civil Engineering and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> Jadina Leitu Carpenter in Civil Engineering and a Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Mark Longdale McLeod Smith in Mechanical Engineering and a Bachelor of Commerce. Kyle Brian Nicholas in Information System Science and a Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Degree of Master of Engineering with First Class Honours, Shirin Kushalapa Ahmed in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Edward Simon Bulog in Engineering Science, University Graduate Scholar. Shou Heng Chang in Software Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar. <laughs> Robert James Connolly in Computer Systems Engineering. <laughs> Jack Richard Anton Sharp Farrant in Mechanical Engineering. Saeed Monis Razak Kazim, Kazmi in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Patrick Courtney Bernard Kenny in Engineering Science. <laughs> J. 
Jong Him Luk in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Matthew David Parker in Bioengineering. <laughs> Ewan Wren in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Hung Shi in Chemical and Materials Engineering. Timothy Peter Swagger in Civil Engineering. <laughs> Chung Che Wei in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Zhu Jie in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. <laughs> Fong Zhu in Mechanical Engineering. To the degree of Master of Engineering with Second Class Honours, First Division, Horace Haochung Guo. <laughs> Sung Chul Lee in Computer Systems Engineering. <laughs> Theo William Sangster in Civil Engineering. <laughs> Ted Chi Tak Yung in Software Engineering. Wei Yu in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Engineering with Second Class Honours, Second Division, Arvind L L Larapet Subramaya. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Engineering Studies with First Class Honours, Christopher Raymond Hanlon in Transportation. To the degree of Master of Engineering Studies with Second Class Honours First Division, Thomas Abraham in Transportation. <laughs> Asif Ahmed. <laughs> Swaraj Kumar Baral in Transportation. <laughs> Satya Brota Gua. Paul Richard Hardcastle in Geotechnical Engineering. <laughs> Conrad Jenkins. <laughs> Darjin in Transportation. <laughs> Shi Chin. Annalise Sabrowski in Transportation. <laughs> Yi Tao in Transportation. <laughs> Dwayne Timothy Wilson in Geotechnical Engineering. <laughs> Yang Zhang. To the degree of Master of Engineering Studies with Second Class Honours Second Division, Zi Lum Barry Ching. <laughs> Ryan John Everest. <laughs> Gansung Gavenda in Transportation. <laughs> Varun Jain. Sang Hyuk Kang. <laughs> Zong Yi Li in transportation. <laughs> Pruksar Shat Noiklang. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Engineering Studies, Andrizo Mendoza Bozia in construction management. Rucha Sandashi Nagurundaka. <laughs> Holly Marie Yukic.
and in absentia all those other persons named in the Book of Convocation qualify for the conferment of a degree or the award of a diploma in the Faculty of Engineering. Thank you, Pro-Chancellor, Pro for conferring the degrees and awarding the diplomas in the first half of this ceremony. One of the great pleasures of graduation is the opportunity to hear performances by students from our acclaimed School of Music, Nick Hall, Laura Prendergast, and Patricia Robertson Vickers on trumpet will now perform Fanfare for St Edmundsbury by Benjamin Britten. Benjamin Britten wrote that uh, fanfare, and it was always written for three trumpets, I think it was to celebrate the opening of a cathedral. Um, so it was written with the purpose of celebration in mind, and I can't think of a more appropriate piece of music for a graduation ceremony. It was beautifully played. Can I ask you to thank Nick and Laura and Patricia again?
by the authority vested in me by resolution of the University of Auckland Council, I, Roger France Chancellor, confer the degrees and award the diplomas stated upon those who within their faculty have satisfied the requirements of this university. I now call upon the Dean of the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences, Professor Martin, to present graduands in that faculty. Chancellor, as Dean, I have the honour of presenting to you the graduands in the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. Graduate Diploma in Health Sciences, Jimmy Roy Jacobson Frank Jacobus Franson. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Health Sciences, Khalid Mohammed Hisham Al Alaitar. Abdullah Abdul Basit Il Ali Halal. <laughs> Tehal Shirley Apa Apa Timu. <laughs> Kimberly Jade Burnett. Alice Jean Coleman, Senior Scholar in Population Health. <laughs> Rennie Jonathan Unimoto Douglas. <laughs> Amelia Francis Fuko Fuka. <laughs> Tasmin Simone Goldstone. Makalita Hola Maliawa. <laughs> Rihanna Christina Mohammed. <laughs> Esther Evie Riatri. Shannon Elizabeth Spaulding, Senior Scholar in Population Health. <laughs> Ying Shi. <laughs> to the degree of Human Biology, Malia Tupatala. To the degree of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, Ranganui Pari Wahawaha Hinipari Te Kimiroa Flavel. Amy Laura Tallon. <laughs> Philip George Tane. <laughs> Himali Chandra Wethasinghe. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Nursing, Melanie Nicole Archibald. Shuba Galznabi. <laughs> Sheena Kaihui Gao. <laughs> Sarah Joy Hima. <laughs> Sarah Jane Patak. and Margaret Revel.
Leander Dorothy Ritchie. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Health Sciences conjoint, Yi Sul Kim and a Bachelor of Commerce. <laughs> to the degree of Bachelor of Nursing conjoint, Jacqueline Laura Church and a Bachelor of Health Sciences. Now Jock Cower and a Bachelor of Health Sciences. Zara Salwari and a Bachelor of Health Sciences. Jessica Mary Tiplady and a Bachelor of Health Sciences. Postgraduate Diploma in Health Psychology. Eva Rose Moranga. <laughs> Postgraduate Diploma in Health Sciences with Distinction, Nicholas Mark Booth in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Joe M. Timothy Liano Cabamongan in Advanced Nursing. Postgraduate Diploma in Health Sciences with Merit, G2 Benny in Pharmaceutical Science. <laughs> Diane Birmingham. <laughs> Stephanie Jean Besseling in Advanced Nursing. Darminda Bardwaj in Mental Health Nursing. <laughs> Julie Carroll in Youth Health. <laughs> Grant Alan Chandler in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Joanne Christine Marie Garrett in Advanced Nursing. Carmini Ghosh in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Tracy Vanessa Golter. <laughs> Teresa Ann Harris in Mental Health Nursing. <laughs> Anne Dorothy Hutching in Advanced Nursing. George McNally in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Sheila Devi Mouton in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Haley Tanya Moyle in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Alina Victoria Pritchard in Advanced Nursing. Angela Marie Rathel in Advanced Nursing. Andrea Tainerson in Alcohol and Drug Studies. Postgraduate Diploma in Health Sciences. Christiana Oyanadi Barmadali Abudun Adashina in Advanced Nursing. Estelle Cazalet in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Bernadette Louise Clatworthy in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Helen Cohen. <laughs> Linda Maureen Downey. Dwayne Tamati Fale Fale Tanoe in an Alcohol and Drug Studies. <laughs> 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 
Ellis Wynne Jones Moretti in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Sukhdive Guru Bashan Singh Kaur in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Ataria Huihana Marsden. <laughs> Patricia Karen McHenry in Mental Health Nursing. Isata Naidu in Advanced Nursing. Jill Winifred Oteni in Advanced Nursing. Margie Jaimin Kumar Patel in Pharmaceutical Science. Sunita Lata Prasad in Advanced Nursing. Donna Mae Kurumit in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Elizabeth Fadsai Tepper in Advanced Nursing. <laughs> Postgraduate Diploma in Public Health with Merit. Kiri Mae Rabina Dargaville. Postgraduate Diploma in Public Health, Boa Kim. <laughs> Shia Jung Lin. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Audiology with First Class Honours. Derek William Hadfield. <laughs> Ruth Yichung Lin. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Audiology with Second Class Honours, Second Division, Michael Stewart Charles King. Evan S. Lim. Anthony Chantilal Patel. Wan Tian. To the degree of Master of Audiology with Second Class Honours, Second Division, Rebecca Louise Russell. <laughs> Mi Kyung Shin. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Health Sciences with first class honours, Elizabeth R Lorraine Schoff. To the degree of Master of Health Sciences with Second Class Honours, First Division, Travis Lance Bardenhorst. <laughs> Joanne Marie Davies. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Health Sciences, Wendy Ann Piri. To the degree of Master of Nursing with First Class Honours, Jane Angela Bennett. <laughs> David John Garland. <laughs> Paul David Talfar. To the degree of Master of Nursing with First Class Honours, 
Patricia Ann Krogan. Briar Ann McLeod. Karen Leanne Sangster. To the degree of Master of Nursing with Second Class Honours, Second Division, Vernon Junior Chungson, and a Postgraduate Diploma in Health Sciences with Merit in Advanced Nursing. Catherine Ann Lee. Leanne Joan Rhodes. Gillian Margaret Thompson. To the degree of Master of Nursing, Lorraine Dorothy Hartley. Paula Ann Murray. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Public Health with First Class Honours, Heather Susan Deal. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Public Health with Second Class Honours, First Division, Aditi Gopalrao Chebi. Ada Yukmai Chung. <laughs> Evelyn Miria Hukurawa. <laughs> Rosalyn Daniels Malua. And, in absentia, those other persons named in the Book of Convocation qualified for the conferment of a degree or an award of a diploma from the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. I now call upon the Vice-Chancellor to present the doctoral graduands. Chancellor, I have the honour of presenting to you the doctoral graduands. To the degree of Doctor of Medicine, Katerina Li Lin Chang. Cat explored, Cat explored the use of severity assessment tools to predict risk in patients hospitalised for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. These tools, tools help target health resources to those at highest risk and may lead to new treatment avenues in these patients. Yeah, Nicholas James Evanet. Nicholas investigated novel markers of intestinal injury in neonates and demonstrated their role in the diagnosis, prognosis and surgical decision making in an illness called necrotizing enterocolitis. Martin Gregory Harvey. Martin investigated the efficacy and beneficial mechanism of action of intravenous lipid emulsion as an antidote in lipid soluble drug poisonings. His research has seen lipid emulsions become widely used in the medical practice of toxicology. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Pereira. Jennifer evaluated patients with multiple sclerosis treated with a drug called alumtuzumab. Her research identified a novel method to pre prevent the immune system from neutralising protein-based medications. Put 
to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Ruth Eva Suzanne Allen in Health Sciences, University Doctoral Scholar. Ruth studied the experiences of childless older New Zealanders and discovered that fears about a lack of support due to population ageing and increasing childlessness are largely unfounded. Her research challenges us to recognise the resourceful networks through which older people both give and receive support outside of traditional family links. Jane Marie Elsweiler in paediatrics. Jane carried out clinical and experimental research into the management and long-term effects of high blood glucose, blood glucose concentrations in preterm babies. This was done in order to provide an evidence-based approach to a problem which commonly affects babies born very preterm. Victoria Sophia Harver Anderson in general practice. Victoria compared types of continuing medical education for GPs to determine which was most effective in changing the management of heart failure. The key objective was to discover whether education delivery via the internet was as effective as more customary methods such as small group learning and passive dissemination of information. Craig Anthony Bagley in Electrical and Electronic Engineering and a Master of Engineering with First Class Honours in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Craig invested, investigated ferrite core loss phenomena under magnetic DC bias conditions in order to advance physical knowledge and improve the efficiency levels of electronic power supplies. Robert Daniel Barrett in Physiology, University Doctoral Scholar. Robert investigated the impact of therapeutic hypothermia in the preterm brain after severe hypoxia or ischemia. He confirmed that mild hypothermia was generally safe and that early but not late initiation of induced hypothermia could improve survival of immature brain cells and recovery of brain activity but at the cost of reducing replenishment of white matter cells during recovery from injury. <laughs> Nicola Michelle Bugen in Molecular Medicine. Nicola investigated the contribution of growth factors to cancer cell radio resistance and demonstrated that antagonism of human growth hormone function sensitises breast cancer cells to treatment with radiation. <laughs> Ian Yin Hong Chen in Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar. Ian investigated real-time hybrid simulation methods and visualisation techniques with the intention of applying them to aid the development of complex robot systems for high-risk operations. <laughs> Melanie Joy Shong in Pharmacology, University Graduate Scholar. Melanie's research focused on developing techniques to grow post-mortem human brain cells in the laboratory and to evaluate the potential of these cell cultures as test systems for identifying new therapies for brain diseases. She developed Tikanga Māori methodologies for working with human brain tissue, integrating Māori values into her research practice.
David Kuman in anesthesiology. David investigated and enhanced the physiological models used in anesthesia simulation, thus increasing the realism and autonomy of the simulators used in promoting patient safety in this field. Klaus Freitas de Souza in Chemical and Materials Engineering. Klaus investigated milk viscosity and developed a new methodology capable of delivering reliable and repeatable viscosity estimates that could be applied in milk powder process control. Daniel Andrew Devsich in Health Psychology, University Doctoral Scholar. Conducted in cardiac settings, Daniel's research examined the extent to which diagnostic, te diagnostic testing influences patients' illness beliefs and subsequent health behaviours. The findings have, have implications for how diagnostic test results are communicated to patients in the clinical environment. Ofanaite Anna Jews in Health Sciences. Ofa compared lifestyle and obesity levels in a sample of Pacific Island youth living in Auckland. Her work has highlighted the central role that the church can have in delivering obesity prevention programs to their communities. Tushari Dilrukshi de Sanayaka in bioengineering. Tushari's work showed that heart pumps can be powered wirelessly. This eliminates the risk of infections from a driveline wire and will offer hope to many who would otherwise find themselves on a waiting list for a heart transplant. Kerry Ann Evans in Biomedical Science. Kerry Ann's project was to identify and assess the frequency and spectrum of mutations in children and young adults who are at risk of inherited cardiac disease. Her research has been used to identify individuals with gene mutations, allowing for early preventative treatment for those with increased risk of sudden cardiac death. Wan Hua Feng in civil engineering. Wan Hua investigated the production of micro bubble dispersions from biosurfactant and the mechanism and factors by which the bioactive micro bubble dispersion improves in-site cleanup of subsurface soil contamination. James Matthew Fick in Chemical and Materials Engineering. James investigated the response of healthy and degenerate cartilage to compressive loading, providing further insights into the mechanical changes that are associated with cartilage degeneration. Todd Allen Gisby in Bioengineering, University Doctoral Scholar. Todd developed a true artificial muscle that is capable of mimicking the impressive overall performance and unparalleled versatility of natural muscle. His work is a significant step towards intelligent soft machines that will blur the boundary between nature and technology. Silmara Gusso in Physiology, University Doctoral Scholar. Silmara investigated cardiac function in type 1 diabetic adolescents using the novel approach of assessing heart function during exercise in real time with magnetic resonance imaging. Her study has highlighted that cardiac dysfunction occurs soon after the onset of diabetes 
and likely reflects elevated glucose levels. Richard Stewart Henry in Civil Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar, Bright Future Top Achiever Doctoral Scholar. Richard investigated the seismic behaviour and design of self-centering concrete walls that minimise the damage caused to a building during an earthquake, reducing the economic costs and allowing for immediate reoccupancy. Sarah Elizabeth Hunter in Nursing, University Doctoral Scholar with a postgraduate diploma in Health Sciences and Advanced Nursing. Sarah explored the emotional and interpersonal impact of fertility damage and premature menopause from cancer treatments, an issue of crucial importance for the growing population of young cancer survivors worldwide. Daniel Glenn Hurley in Bioengineering, University Doctoral Scholar. Daniel used computer modelling to study the regulatory networks of genes in cancer cells. He created new computer algorithms and new ways of visualising gene information and used these on data he generated in the laboratory to find new insights into the relationship between melanoma genes and patient survival. Prashant Kumar Jamwal in Mechanical Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar. Prashant investigated some fundamental design and control aspects of human-robot interaction while developing a first ever wearable robot for ankle joint rehabilitation treatments. During the course of research, Prashant also invented a new multi-criteria optimization method. Armin Adam Kahokia in Surgery. Armin investigated the impact of long-acting local anaesthetic on the intraperitoneal wound in surgical patients <coughs> undergoing colectomy. A novel infusion delivery method was devised and clinically studied. Hemant Kumar in Pharmacy, University Doctoral Scholar. Hemant investigated a biopolymer as a carrier for the delivery of a milk protein, lactoferrin, to improve bioavailability bio with the aim of developing therapies for osteoporosis and other bone disorders. Peter Edward Lesher in Mechanical Engineering. Peter developed a method for producing water-free, highly plasticised thermoplastic starch blends that can be moulded into products by injection, compression and rotational moulding. <laughs> Hao Li in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Howe investigated and developed high-frequency power converters based on energy injection control, which greatly simplified the structure and control complexity of high-frequency power converters for various wireless power applications. <laughs> Chao Wa Lu in Behavioural Science. TESS completed a community-based participatory action research project to promote population mental health and increase trust, resourcefulness, connectedness and well-being of the people in an urban, diverse and disadvantaged community in Auckland. Sachin Matur in Surgery. 
Such an investigated potentially modifiable factors that influence survival in patients with advanced liver disease and whether supplementation with a nutritional formula that model modulates the immune system can improve outcomes from liver transplantation. <laughs> John Daniel McCormick in bioengineering, bright future top achiever doctoral scholar. Daniel showed how an arbitrarily oriented device can be powered wirelessly. This is particularly exciting for powering implanted medical devices. Anita Davy Mutu Karupan, an obstetrics and gynaecology university doctoral scholar. Anita's project has shown that the study of gene expression can identify key genes and molecular pathways in the development of breast cancer. Her research can be used in the future to help optimise diagnostic and therapeutic decision making for patients. Pratika Joytishna Narayan in pharmacology. Pratika showed that epigenetics, a cellular mechanism for controlling genes, is involved in causing brain diseases such as Alzheimer's. This work extends our understanding of brain diseases and opens up new treatment strategies. Rowani Samemi Bernice Nashu in Community Health. Rowani investigated the enablers and barriers to academic success for Samoan health students at the University of Auckland. Her research provides insights into increasing the capability and capacity of the Samoan and Pacific health workforce in New Zealand, given the growing health needs of Pacific communities. Amanda Lee Potts in Anesthesiology, University Doctoral Scholar. Amanda investigated the pharmacology of dexmedetotamine in children with a view to describing dose regimens that provide beneficial clinical effects with minimal adverse effects. Michael Peter Sanders in audiology. Michael investigated how background noise tolerance is affected by attention and auditory scene analysis with a view to improving hearing aid acceptance. Lisa Mary Schneiderman Walton in community health. Lisa investigated how well the health system meets the needs of cancer survivors and found gaps and disparities. Her research offers a unique insight into personal and health system factors and provides a policy foundation for appropriate targeting of interventions and services. Mehdi Shabazpour in Mechanical Engineering. Mehdi developed a comprehensive model of innovation from multiple perspectives and used this to study the innovation activities of small and medium-sized <coughs> manufacturing firms. Based on his understanding of the innovation characteristics of smaller firms, he developed a practical framework for initiating and implementing strategic manufacturing systems and process innovation at these companies. Annalisa Jean Swan in Bioengineering, University Doctoral Scholar. Annalisa developed a unique multi-scale computational model for simulating pulmonary gas exchange in the human lung. She used this model to explain how the normal lung maintains efficient gas exchange and to predict the critical point at which abnormal gas exchange could be detected 
through standard clinical measurements and acute lung injury. <laughs> Ruth Oyen Te in general practice. Ruth established that the level of exercise and HDL cholesterol are related to cardiovascular risk for people in advanced age. Strategies to promote activity to improve these factors may be more beneficial to cardiovascular health in advanced age than has been expected. <laughs> Thalini Rasika Thrumabuthana in Pharmacy, University Doctoral Scholar. Thalini's research focused on age-related macular degeneration the leading cause of irreversible visual impairment and blindness in people over the age of 60. Thalini developed a polymeric system which prevents the reflux of the administered drug, providing reproducible delivery and therefore improved therapeutic outcomes. Yun Ho Choi in Mechanical Engineering, Bright Future, Top Achiever Doctoral Scholar. Yun Ho investigated the incorporation of ankle mechanical properties in the formulation of an adaptive interaction control strategy for ankle rehabilitation robots with a focus to improve the safety and effectiveness of such robots. William Andrew Walbrun in Mechanical Engineering. Andrew carried out experimental and numerical studies of manufacturing processes for advanced composite materials. These processes are suitable for medium to high production volumes and Andrew's work will allow for the optimal specification of required processing equipment. Jerry Kwan Ting Wong in Molecular Medicine and Pathology. Jerry investigated whether immunisation based approaches could be used to generate antibodies against a brain protein called the dopamine transporter with a view to the development of antibody based therapies against neurological diseases. Cha Han Yang in Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Cha Han developed new approaches to verification of industrial automation software based on international standards. This work will improve correctness and robustness of the control design in industry. The results can be applied in a variety of industries from dairy and wine to car manufacturing. Yung Li Xian in Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University Doctoral Scholar. Li Xian investigated the use of graphical programming techniques to automatically generate reliable software for industrial control systems. His approach is more efficient and reliable than existing industry strength techniques and hence has significant scope for commercialization. Zuo Shi in Civil Engineering. Kelvin investigated the procurement and contractual arrangements for post-disaster reconstruction. His work will help inform successful management processes for disaster recovery. And in absentia, all those other persons named in the Book of Convocation qualified for the conferment of a doctoral degree.
Teaching Excellence Awards. The university places considerable significance on excellence in teaching, and it recognises this by making awards each year to teachers who have demonstrated excellence in aspects of teaching. These awards are contestable across the university and signify a truly superior achievement. An award for sustained excellence in teaching has been made to Associate Professor Tony Ashton in the School of Population Health within the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. I call upon a student of that faculty, Elisabetta Sapina, to read the citation for Associate Professor Ashton. I am delighted to speak about Associate Professor Tony Ashton's excellence as a university teacher. I count myself very fortunate to have been taught and supervised by Tony, and now to work alongside her as a tutor. Tony doesn't just teach health economics. She loves health economics, and it shows. It shows in the enormous depth of knowledge she has about the subject and the way she is able to present the complexities to students in common sense ways, inspiring to take up challenges that are presented before them. For most students, health economics is a new, field of, a new field of study. If it weren't for Tony's approach, it would be easy to flounder and get lost. Tony doesn't let that happen. It is hard not to become involved in a class Tony is teaching. In large lectures, she makes a huge effort to get students talking. In small postgraduate settings, students are fully involved. She gets involvement by skillfully drawing on the real world issues brought to the class by postgraduate students who already work in the health sector or by contextualising health economics issues through reference to current debates. Techniques like these bring the subject to life for students. Tony really enjoys teaching and it is clear that she devotes an enormous amount of time and effort to her students, always interested in their plans and providing, providing them with excellent feedback. Ask graduates of programmes like the Master of Public Health to reflect on their time at the university. And Tony's <coughs> name is frequently mentioned as their most outstanding lecturer. Many of these people credit Tony with setting their interest in the career and health policy. This is a mark of an excellent teacher, and so it is a pleasure to present Tony Ashton as a worthy recipient of a teaching award. On behalf of the university, I now invite all today's graduates to stand and receive the congratulations of us all. And this would be the perfect opportunity for the graduates to show their appreciation of their families and supporters and the staff of the university who have helped them as they achieve their qualifications. Please be seated. Chancellor, council members, distinguished guests, graduates, families and friends of graduates and of the university, uh, university colleagues. The celebration of graduation is a major event in the calendar of the university. It's also a minor miracle of organisation that we manage to repeat at least twice a year. The university salutes all graduates who have made it possible for, you, for us to celebrate your success. 
A successful graduation means that we must ensure that all six ceremonies proceed smoothly. That means checking results and communicating with some 2,450 students who, in total, receive 2,708 degrees and diplomas. More than 1,800 students have crossed the stage over two days of celebrations. And so, as you can see, it is quite an exercise. On your behalf, therefore, I would like to thank those who have made graduation not only possible, but undoubtedly an occasion that you will remember with pleasure. Included in those thanks are the Auckland Grammar School Pipe Band, which provides the music for our procession to the Town Hall, the organist, James Tibbles, who has played at each ceremony. The musicians from the School of Music who have provided musical items at each ceremony. Six graduation speakers, each with an appropriate message. Members of the University Council, busy people who make time to join us for this special occasion. The Fire Karanga team who perform the karanga that welcomes everyone to each ceremony. The Kate Edgar Educational Trust, which, which provides many of the ceremonial caps, gowns and hoods, and any profits that they make from that process are used to fund scholarships. The staff of the Town Hall and the staff who taught you and made your graduation possible, represented by my colleagues on the stage here today. The staff who organise and officiate at graduation and ensure that nearly everything and nearly everyone arrives at the right place and at the right time. The Mace Bearers, Associate Professors Corin Locke and Gary Barkhuysen, and Dr Douglas Carey. The role of the Mace Bearer is to escort and protect the official party. Behind the scenes are the staff of the Graduation Office, managed by Margaret Allen. They complete all the paperwork required for each student who graduates. They ensure that the ceremonies run on time. They slot those arriving late into their correct seats. They even today identified somebody trying to graduate who didn't have a degree. <laughs> I know, hard to believe, isn't it? And they have worked long hours over the last few weeks to make sure that everyone feels that graduation is a special day. And so we thank the graduation team for their dedication. Finally, we must thank our Chancellor, Roger France, and our Pro-Chancellor, Ian Parton. Between them, they have shaken almost 2,000 hands this week, spoken to each graduate, and been greeted and photographed in numerous ways. The Chancellor has also prepared and delivered six welcome speeches. So thank you to all those involved, and as always, thank you, Chancellor. Uh, this concludes this meeting of Council and Convocation of the University for the conferment of degrees and the award of diplomas. I now invite you to sing the first verse of God Defend New Zealand in Māori and then in English. The words are printed on the reverse of your programmes. <laughs> <laughs>